Rome X5 in a video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. As always, share the video to a friend who likes what ifs or just name the content in general. Check out the descriptions down below. Um, yeah. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. And smile. We left off with basically Naruto landing on his butt again after trying to attack Sugetsu. As Sugetsu would now have dialogue with Naruto. Okay, Naruto. This is a huge problem you've got. You're naive, and, well, you have now been caught with the same attack twice. Okay, a ninja attacks you the first time? Hmm, that's pretty cool. They can do that. The second time, they do it to you again? They like doing that a lot. The third time should never happen, because now you should have figured out that that's their favorite move. It's what they're comfortable with and not something that you want to let happen three times in a row. You got that, Naruto? So this time, when I come at you and try to trip your legs from under your feet, I want you to attack me. Don't let me do it. Don't let me put you on your butt again. So we get to came at Naruto again, but his speed was far too quick for Naruto, and Naruto fell over, but this time face planting into the ground instead of onto his butt. Naruto's idea was to run at Sugetsu with a fist, and so Sugetsu did still trip him, but this time he landed face first instead of butt first. With that being said, Sugetsu left. <laughs> this is going to be the most annoying week of my life. You need some speed. Like, seriously. I'll be back. Don't get into trouble. Oh, and here's a little book. So he gets to pull a book out from his cape, and he threw it down onto the ground. <sighs> if you want to learn some exercises while I'm gone, that would help. He then left for about an hour and came back with multiple things. He came back with kunai, shuriken, paper bombs, a small sword, a short sword to be exact, a bigger sword, just a normal sword, and weights, lots and lots of weighted best. With that, Naruto was then directed by Sugetsu to put on this weight. And he started off with the weight on the ground. So it wasn't like Naruto put on the weight while he was standing. No, he was already on the ground, and so we get to put on the weight with him, obviously, so that Naruto now had the weight on him. And all Naruto had to do, as simple as it sounded, yet it wasn't as simple as it sounded, was to get up. To stand up. That's quite literally all Sugetsu wanted him to do. And Naruto couldn't do it. With nearly 200 pounds weighing down a six year old Naruto, there was just about nothing he could do to get up. And so, Suigetsu didn't care. This was how he was taught, and he was going to teach Naruto this way. People aren't just going to pick you up when they see you struggle, even if those are your loved ones. And so, he was now instilling a toughness into Naruto that was not present in the timeline of the canon Naruto. Come on, Naruto. Stand up already. You think this is some game? <sighs> you know I have to leave soon. In what, five, six days? <sighs> I can't sit here the entire time watching you struggle to get up. It would be then that Naruto had tried for about three hours just to get up. And nothing he did worked. He would maybe create about an inch of distance between him and the dirt beneath him, but would slowly just end up falling down. Okay, Naruto, I'm gonna go get us some food. I just heard your stomach growl. And also, I'm kinda hungry. Naruto let off a smile, although the smile quickly turned into, well, a frown, as he realized he was still stuck in the same predicament he was before and after Sugetsu said that. He then brought the food to Naruto, and 
it just so happened to be Ichiraku's ramen. Packaged in a box and rested on a tree stump, Naruto could smell it, and it smelled so good. Exhausted, with no energy at all, Naruto kept trying and trying, and Sugetsu smiled. Seeing a kid so determined to get up, well, it couldn't help but remind him of his younger self. With that being said, Naruto rose about three inches off the ground, and then five, and then ten, and then twenty. And then slowly but surely, his knees lifted, his legs began to get proper footing on the dirt beneath him, and he stood taller than he had ever stood before. But something was different, so he could feel it. He started to back away from Naruto as... Naruto began to resemble that of a cat, now with visible whiskers on his face, and, well, his teeth enlarged, his hair standing, as if the wind was blowing in his face, and red eyes with a slit in the middle where the pupil was supposed to be. All Naruto could do was, well, watch Suigetsu back up from him as he grabbed his Ichiraku's ramen. With that, Naruto fell right back to the ground as soon as he got up and grabbed the food. And Suigetsu walked closer to him, no longer afraid. What just happened was Naruto and his chakra, his energy, had completely depleted to zero. And most of you should know that if somebody's chakra level reaches zero 99.9% of the time, they die. And so, Naruto surviving here was all in part due to the nine tails within him not allowing him to die. With that being said, Suigetsu saw something in Naruto. A deep inner hatred. An inner power, rather. Not hatred, but a power. A power that allowed Naruto to stand with 200 pounds on top of him. Something that Sugetsu, when he was younger, was not able to do. And often just returned to his water state so that he could get out of such a thing. The only reason why he only, well, wanted to watch Naruto have 200 pounds on him and try to get up was, well, so that Naruto would get stronger mentally. And in, uh, I guess, a smaller part, physically as well. But mainly just mentally. Naruto going through a struggle, struggle that big at the age of six would help him in the future. And he never expected Naruto to actually power through it. Nonetheless, in just less than five hours. Suigetsu slowly removed the weights off of Naruto, and Naruto gracefully ate his food, with Suigetsu joining in to eat his Ichiraku's ramen as well. Suigetsu laughed. You know, kid, you're far stronger than you probably realize. I... I am? Hell yeah, you are. Oh, and not to mention the fact that... You're quite literally probably the strongest six-year-old that I've ever met. Besides myself, of course, although I've never technically met myself. <sighs> Not to brag or anything, that is. Now, Naruto, you understand what it means to be mentally taught, but what about physically? Does this have to do with weights again? Yes, it does, but not the weighted vest. Well, yes, the weight of vest. This time, you're only going to be weighed down by 20 pounds. That should be manageable, even by a kid your age. And you are going to be lifting weights. W what? 
The muscle damage that was done from Naruto trying to get up with so much weight on him before had already been healed due to the Ninetales Chakra and Naruto's Uzumaki healing factor. And so this wasn't really a problem for Naruto's body to endure. It was really just how far Suigetsu was willing to push it. And Suigetsu now knew this as he saw the visible damage on Naruto reversed as soon as that chakra emerged. That reddish aura, that monstrous feeling. The pressure of a true king. The pressure of of Agent Juriki. So he gets he paused. W wait a minute, Naruto. Are you a Jinjuriki? What's a Jinjuriki? You know, the, the people that have a tail beast within them? Uh, I, I don't know. M maybe, I, uh, probably not. What do you mean, maybe, probably not? Are you? So he gets he came to this conclusion because, well, he had seen the fourth of the Mist Village. And he had felt the pressure behind his aura. That of a tailed beast, the three-tailed beast. And him feeling that in the Mizukage, that pressure was so similar to what he felt within Naruto. It made him rethink who Naruto was. And then, here comes the real training. So we get to Naruto would work for hours upon hours every single day until Naruto became competent enough to defend himself, to properly offensively attack somebody, and to where his defensive abilities became not just subpar, but actually good. And he wasn't just flailing up his arms to try and block an attack. This time he was moving with calculation, with real motive in every action. So Getsu taught Naruto to not waste a single action and to get the most out of everything he did. Whether it was a punch turning into a grab of a kunai, whether it was one step to the left instead of the right, it didn't matter. Not a single movement or action was wasted by Naruto now in order to become the strongest Naruto could be in a week. Naruto was also taught chakra control, but just barely as well. Suigetsu couldn't fully properly teach it, but he was able to tell Naruto the basics with the limited amount of time he had. The end of the week was now up and Suigetsu had not been able to find the blade, the Kiba swords. But something about leaving Naruto just didn't feel right. And so Suigetsu continued to teach Naruto, not only for more than a week, but for more than a year, more than two years, more than four years, more than five whole years, which took Naruto from the gentle age of six to the more dominant age of 11. Naruto had grown into the perfect ninja, a stone cold killer who had the ability to turn the switch on and off. He could be your amazing assassin, whilst in the same moment, he could be the person that empathizes with you, sympathizes with you, and, well, cares for you, about you. He was the guy who could go out and kill a hundred men whilst not burning a sweat and not shedding a tear or a single ounce of doubt, doubt or even anything in between sadness to be exact but he was also the guy that could sit with your four-year-old daughter and comfort them he was the perfect ninja as i stated now he has become the perfect ninja and although he doesn't have the strength to say he's number one in the village he definitely has the mentality now, where does Naruto scale as far as his power goes? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later, but you could go as far as ranking him low Kage level to as strong as someone like Raza, Gara's father. 
and the fourth of the sand village. Now, with that being said, that is only after Naruto taps into his QB chakra. Yes, Naruto has been able to learn how to control three tails of the QB's chakra, but struggles with anything after that. Now, how did this happen? Well, Suigetsu, soon after asking Naruto if he was a Jinjuriki, realized Naruto was a Jinjuriki, and then he did his research on how Jinjurikis become perfect, like the fourth Mizukage was a perfect Jinjuriki with his three tails. And so, after doing research, he tried his best to help Naruto, and in every way he could, he did. He allowed Naruto to speak with the Nine Tails, to understand the Nine Tails, to research the Nine Tails, and help Naruto out with his own identity in some ways. With that being said, the Nine Tails is okay with Naruto and doesn't necessarily hate him just because he's the son of the Fourth Hokage. His dislike for Naruto now only comes from the fact that Naruto's human and that. Humans have done so much to him in the past, but through that, he has also learned that not all humans are the same. People like Sugetsu and Naruto are treated differently because they are different. Just like people like the Tailed Beast, or rather things, energies, entities like the Tailed Beast are treated differently because they are different, like Naruto and Sugetsu. And that's just how humans are. Kurama now understanding this changes his outlook on Naruto and his outlook on sharing a body with Naruto and giving Naruto his chakra when he needs it. With that being said, Naruto in his three-tailed state is as strong as Akage, without a doubt. But in his base form, he still has the powers of a Jonin, at least. With that being said, his skill is nothing to laugh at with a blade and with kunai and shuriken he also has a wide variety of moves that include paper bombs and has the multi-shadow clone jutsu how does he get it in this timeline well he still steals it now why not because mizuki manipulated him as naruto's not even 12 years old when that happened um what i mean by that is he's not 12 years old in the timeline yet so he doesn't even meet mizuki at this point since he also has not gone to the academy, if you didn't realize. But with that being said, he knows it because Suigetsu had a scroll with him at the time of teaching Naruto it, and in the scroll was the multi-shadow clone jutsu, and although Suigetsu tried to learn the technique himself, he did, and well, it was too much of a strain of chakra, so he decided against it even though it created more Shadow Clones at a higher volume. Instead, he taught it to the younger, more chakra-filled Naruto, and he realized that one of Naruto's greatest strengths is his immense chakra reserve, and how potent that can be on the battlefield. He could create a hundred clones if he wanted, heck, even a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. An ability like that is so dangerous that it puts him on a different level of skill and power than other people of Naruto's strength. Which is why you can't say Naruto's just a Jonin level threat, because he easily becomes more than that. When, well, when he needs to. With that being said, Naruto and Sugetsu's relationship have become like father and son. And although Sugetsu did not know who Naruto's real father was, nor his real mother, he was able to be that, and in some ways, more than others, he found a certain amount of peace, all while still looking for the Kiba Blades during those long five years. Now, did he ever find them? No, but that's exactly why he left. He had to leave. His path brought him to Naruto, and he raised Naruto all the while while looking for the Kiba Blades. And since the Kiva Blades brought him there in the first place, it was, well, it was only right that he left in search of them. In search of those blades, those thunder swords. 
And so he left the village and along with it said goodbye to Naruto, who wanted to come with Sugetsu, but Sugetsu wouldn't allow it. Besides, over the past few weeks before Sugetsu left, Naruto had been being closely monitored by Ambu, who began to grow suspicious of Sugetsu and his relation to Naruto. With that being said, Naruto even began to call Sugetsu dad. And, well, two things actually, dad and Sugetsu, but usually just dad, as far as casual things went. And it was a cool dynamic. Sugetsu appreciated Naruto, and Naruto appreciated Sugetsu for being the one to not only teach him, but to raise him. To take on raising a tailed beast Something that Naruto didn't know was so hard until, well, he realized he was one. Was something that Naruto gave everything to Sugetsu for. Every sense of respect, every sense of, well, love. He gave it to Sugetsu for being the one person to truly care about him above all else. And nothing could beat that. Nothing. With that... Naruto was powerful, and he was far above people like Sasuke in this timeline. But as soon as Sugetsu left the village, he decided he would join the academy. And since he was the same age as people like Sasuke, Sakura, and well, the Konoha 12, he could be in their same graduation class. After a year of being with them. He was now 12 years old, and he had passed with flying colors. He was at the top of the academy list, and being a young upstart who had only spent a year in the academy, compared to Sasuke's four years, had made Sasuke feel inferior to him in almost every way possible. Sasuke could tell that Naruto was stronger, Sasuke could tell that Naruto was faster, smarter even, and well, not many people were smarter than himself. Naruto would go on to graduate through the academy within only one year, making Naruto now nine years old. During the three years from Naruto being a genin to Naruto being, well, 12 years old and matching up with the original timeline, Naruto actually wouldn't go on any missions. He would go on secret missions, but no missions through the D, C, B, A, S ranking missions. So basically what I mean is he would go as, say, a extra genin on a mission of a squad just to accompany them, just to get experience. But he would never actually go on his own missions or anything like that until one day he did. It was about two years after he graduated from the academy, making Naruto about 11 years old. As... He had a B rank mission. This B rank mission was very important to Haruzen, who needed the job done. And since the village was kind of running low on, well, ninja, it was perfect in a way. With that being said, Naruto went on the mission. Now, what exactly was the mission? Well, Naruto would go to the land of tea, and he was to get something for the third Hokage a secret scroll that they kept that they actually stole from the Hidden Leaf Village many years ago. Way back when the third great ninja world was still prominent. World, I said world, I meant war. <laughs> With that being said, Naruto went to the village. He was dressed in a cloak similar to that of the Akatsuki without the clouds. And with that, he entered the village. As soon as Naruto entered, he was looked at as, well, inhuman as he continued walking about through all of the ninja, and men, and women, and, well, overall just civilians to the village. Eventually, he would reach a building as he would enter. As he entered, there was a desk and a woman to greet him. Hello, may I help you? I'm looking for Kakatsuchi Iwari. Oh. Mr. Iwari? Uh, just, just call him Iwari. He prefers that. 
walk down that hallway at the left, then turn two doors. Turn two doors. There will be a hallway with a door. Pass through it, turn right again. There will be another door. Go through it and you will find Mr. Awari. Got it. Thank you, madam. Oh, I'm just a secretary. Regardless, what you do is appreciated. Naruto then walked and followed the lady's instructions as there he stood. Kakatsuchi Iwari. Iwari stood looking out of his great window. It was huge, similar to that of the Hokage office's window. It looked out to the streets and it showed him nearly everything. It meant that he could watch his village while sitting back. Naruto said nothing, but Iwari could tell that he was there. What is it, boy? Why are you here and what do you wish for? What do I wish for? <sighs> I wish to be the future Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. But I'm here to retrieve a scroll. A scroll that your village stole from the leaf. Way back when the Third Great Ninja War was still at large. Lord Third told me that many casualties arose from you stealing this scroll. We now need this scroll back, and we've wanted it back for some time now. So then why didn't you just come and take it from us, like you take everything? Huh? You seem to misunderstand me. I'm here to retrieve the scroll and bring it back to my- I know what the hell you're here for! Do not think me a fool. You see, young brat, the leaf believes that they can stick their nose in just about anything without consequence. Mr. Iwari, is that what the secretary told you? To call me Iwari? Yes, it was. Is that not your name? My name isn't Awari, and it never was. <laughs> My name is Kiba. Kiba. I've met a Kiba before. The Kiba I am is far better, far stronger, far faster, far greater than any other Kiba in the world. I once battled Sakumo Hatake. Huh? Who? <sighs> you young leaf kids. You know nothing of your history. Well then enlighten me, old man. Kiba. <laughs> Sakumo Hatake is stronger than all the three Sonic combined. He carried the Hidden Leaf Village through the Second Great Ninja World. The Second Great Ninja World War. What? Then why have I never heard of the man? Tch. Simple. Because he committed some punko. Why would such a strong shinobi? Well take their own life. <sighs> he chose friends over the mission. He chose his comrade over the mission. His comrades. <sighs> and therefore, he, he took the consequence. When he returned to the village, even the people who he had saved looked at him in disgust. He had taken their lives, his own comrades' lives, over priority of the village and the mission. Because to him, those who would abandon their own comrades are worse than scum. Sakumo Hatsuke 
is stronger than anyone you've probably ever met. And I fought that man and survived. And believe me, that is a feat. Look here, brat. Naruto would throw a kunai at Kiba, who would dodge. You tried to attack me while my guard was down. You know for that I must kill you. The leaf will not know what hit them when their Jinjuriki dies. What? I should have mentioned the reason why I survived against Sakuma. It's because I am so good at reading chakra signatures that I could pinpoint where his next attack was going to be. And although I was still left with scars, scars from that battle that I will never be able to take back, and I subsequently lost and was able to die from him, although he chose to spare me. I still have the ability, and I'm still just as strong as I was all those years ago. Well, at least strong enough to tell that you're the Jinjuriki based on the beast within your belly. Yeah, but that's a well-kept secret. I don't give a damn if it's a well-kept secret. It's the truth. I don't need to hear about how valuable that information is to Konoha, because frankly, I don't give a damn. I'm going to kill you. You're never going to get that scroll. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm right. You are wrong. I will retrieve that scroll from my village. It's the last thing I do. You leave village ninja. So arrogant. Ninja from the stone would get running from now. And Cloud Ninja would be calling back up ten minutes ago. But you, you think you can do it all alone. Even though I know you came here with somebody. Another Joni, another Chuni. Whoever they are, I will find them. Kill them. Naruto drew his blade, and within an instant, Kiba's hand was cut clean off, and he was thriving in pain on his knees. Naruto now held a blade to his neck. You uttered one more scream, and I swear I'll kill you. Kiba looked up at Naruto with piercing eyes as Naruto looked back with an unrelenting glare. Good thing I came here alone. This was only a B-rank mission, but clearly it was far worse than that. Anyways, I'm going to be taking that scroll. Naruto would create a shadow clone with only one hand as that shadow clone would retrieve the scroll, which was kept gently on Kiba's desk. A man would call out to Kiba. Kiba! Kiba! Do you need help? Is something wrong? What's wrong? Naruto would force Kiba to tell him that everything was okay, still holding his blade to his throat. Everything is fine! I swear, I promise it! All right! The footsteps that were coming close to the room began to dissipate. As Naruto then released his grasp on Kiba's neck. Tell me more about this Sakamo Hatake. Why don't you? <sighs> Just kidding. I don't have time for stories, even if I wish I could. He sounds like quite the man, though. With that... Naruto is preparing to leave. As before he did, he took a strand of Kiba's hair. But as soon as he did so and placed it in a vial, he watched as multiple ninja came into the room. It was a ploy. It must have been when Kiba said, I promise and I swear it. Maybe two things that he didn't regularly say or not casually at least, meaning that something was wrong. With that being said, Naruto dropped a smoke bomb, leading through the window. The ninja couldn't find him until the smoke cleared, and they realized that he had subsequently left through the, well, through the gaping big hole through the window. 
which was going to cause them to repair. They grit their teeth and watched as Naruto left the village, just as fast as he had entered it, like a black blur through the night. But this was different. It was like a black shadow through the day, a darkness that shined even in the light. Naruto disappeared and returned back to the village, reporting directly to Haruzen. He would debrief Haruzen on the situation and would even give Haruzen the vial of hair, maybe something that could link him to a figure of notoriety so they could get some sort of identification for Kiba, maybe the clan that he heirs from or something of the sort, possibly even his Kekagenkai if he possessed one. With that being said, Naruto also would tell Haruzen that the man in question fought Sakamo Hatake and that he should not be underestimated. Naruto could feel that his hold on Kiba would be nothing if it weren't for the fact that he had already grabbed the scroll with his shadow claw. Haruzen took all into account, and with that being said, this is where this video is going to end, with a time skip. Naruto is now 12 years old and is yet to join a, well, a real squad and he would be offered by Haruzen the chance to get to join one, as he would join Kakashi Hatake's squad. Surprisingly enough, it intrigued Naruto, and he would actually say yes, due to the connection between Sakamo and Kakashi through their last names. With that being said, he wanted to see if Kakashi was half the ninja that Sakamo was. Half the great shinobi. And with that, he would join Team 7, as, well, it was perfect. As the original Team 7 is still formed with Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, all at different stages in development, with a stronger Sasuke, a more determined Sakura to reach Sasuke's level and, well, to make Sasuke notice her, and a far, far, far stronger Naruto. With that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, as that would be deeply appreciated. Share the video to a friend who likes videos or just anime content in general. And with that being said, Comment down below your thoughts and feelings about the video, what are suggestions, or really any thoughts. With that being said, this has been Rami X. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. I hope you guys all enjoyed What If Naruto Was Raised by Spaghetti Part 2. And with that being said, Rami X, out.